Thank you for watching News Echo. We have a special edition today and it's coming to you from two continents. Uh, we have our man in Milan, Mark Godwin. Mark, you are welcome to the program. Good morning. Good morning, and Dr. We also have our man from Thank the city you. of London, <laughs> Nat Iyakwo. Ambassador Nat, you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much and good morning, everybody. Yes, yeah, so many things have happened all over the world in the last seven days, and we just have to cope with it. We're hoping just two hours we'll be able to condense all. If not, we will have a rollover. But I'm glad you are watching. My name is Chuck Johnson again, and I love you to listen closely today because something may affect someone near you. Uh, let's start with the Afghanistan crisis. Well, most people know what has <coughs> gone on, but the implications and aftermath of the evacuation of the British and American citizens and indeed the European citizens now dominate the place. The British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has been pleading with uh, the President of America, Joe Biden, to extend the August 31 deadline. But it appears the internal politics of the United States will not permit this one. And so there is this... Uh, rigmarole and these challenges between the relations uh, uh, of uh, United States and the Great Britain. And also we've seen so many pictures of people trying to rush into the uh, military planes just to get out of Afghanistan. We have a challenge in our hand. Houston, there is a problem. Let's bring in uh, my colleague, Ambassador Nat. Ambassador Nat, you are the in-house researcher. Can you bring us up to date? Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Johnson. We, the, the, the whole world, the whole world, I said the whole world, uh, the whole world's attention is now focused on this country known as Afghanistan. Afghanistan, every day now the news is Afghanistan. And in Afghanistan, the spot is Kabul, international airport in Kabul. And uh, for the past days, um, there have been attempts since Afghanistan uh, took over, uh, um, took control of, of uh, the, Tal the Taliban took over the control of Af Afghanistan and Kabul. The, after the Afghani government uh, disappeared, um, the soldiers disappeared into twin air, and now the, the, it's the Americans and the British, uh, and I think NATO too, have been trying to evacuate uh, the, 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 their, their armed forces, their citizens, and citizens of other countries. Uh, they are all, they are holed up in the Kabul, International Airport, and the latest count, the latest count we know of, more than at the airport. You can see the Taliban people enjoying themselves. The, the after they took over the presidential palace, they emptied all the food in 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 the palace. They were eating and enjoying themselves. So, the, but the, the, the crucial moment we are heading to is by next week, Tuesday, the 31st of August 2021, the Afghan, no, the Taliban have given a deadline. If all foreigners should leave that country. And I think it's also in line with the, the evacuation deadline USA gave, gave, uh, the whole world they want everybody out of that place yeah, uh, they, Nat, the g7 yes. met yesterday and uh, did they not come to a form of compromise they no they, they, there are attempts to see if they can persuade the taliban to extend uh extend after the 31st of um august 2020 are the taliban playing games they are playing games. They are playing games. Uh, they are playing games. Though uh, America has said whether Taliban is playing games or not, 
America wants all their, in fact, their troops, troops are, have started leaving today, finally, some of the troops. So they are hoping that by the third year, everybody, uh, the American troops and citizens should have okay. left. Uh, let, me, but, let, let me quickly jump the pond and go to Mark in Milan. Mark, um, do you think uh, a major upset was made the way Joe Biden did it? Or is it just the internal politics of the United States that is uh, showing that uh, he has made so many mistakes? I mean, Donald Trump uh, made this uh, uh, agreement one year ago, and everybody knew they were pulling out. So why was this last minute became so chaotic? And uh, and and then those, did he really make a mistake, or is just the local politics highlighting it? Thank you, Dr. Shagun. Once again, I say good morning. Um, yes, um, the evacuation process is is not done right. The the whole thing looks like a um, a, a child's play, and uh, we're talking of human lives there. Um, yes, Joe, Joe Biden is uh, not, uh, he's, he, the uh, process and what he's doing is not, he, he, he doesn't show uh, the strength of America like we used to know. Yesterday there was a G7 emergency meeting and uh, what they were doing was actually begging Joe Biden to negotiate and extend that date, that, uh, uh, date uh, um, um, timeline that they've been given. But the uh, Afghan Taliban are insisting on 30th, 30th August, everybody should leave. Uh, what we are seeing in Afghan is, is sad because people are being crushed to death. Children and women are crushed all because they, everybody wants to run out. But the Afghan, the Taliban government have come to say that they should all be at peace. And uh, they, in fact, they blocked the, the road to the airport so that they, nobody will rush. And uh, uh, they, they are saying their people should be at peace. They are not doing anything to anybody. But they, the people, the citizens know that uh, the Taliban are not a people to trust. Um, yeah, I was, I was about to ask you that. Do you trust the Taliban that they will not bring Sharia laws? We don't trust the Taliban. We don't trust the Taliban. Um, mm. Also, there's an ugly situation that might really spiral to, up to, to in this situation, and that's uh, the, the ISIS, uh, ISIS uh, terrorist group, are also coming in again to ask for a portion of Afghan as their own. And we know the story of the ISIS and the Taliban. Uh, and a, a disagreement has been going on for six years now. So... Um, the whole thing is really getting out of control, and Joe Biden is taking very slow decisions. Yes, there was plan to pull out, but um, it was an arranged plan, and uh, Trump had a way he wanted to do it. So now we also see a situation where billions of um, uh, dollar equipment, gadgets, arms, uh, home fees, and all this are now in the hands of the Taliban. And this means they've equipped them for more now, terrorists. Now, let, let me ask a question there. Why did the Americans not move those equipments before now? I mean, what was the problem? Exactly. That, that, that's that process of evacuation. It's a stage. Um, at the point, they, that, that will come when the equipment, the Humvees and all the uh, uh, fighter planes and everything will be moved. But at this level, at this rush, rush hour uh, process they are going through, that can be moved. So it's a situation where those things will be left in the hands of terrorists, criminals, and uh, uh, men that have no uh, mercy for human life. And that will increase terrorism in that, that uh, region. We also have a situation where a lot of them are coming to Europe. They are coming, they are being... Uh, brought in as refugees, but um, do we trust these people coming in? Do we really trust them uh, uh, to be uh, to follow with the country they are coming to, to follow the laws of the land? Will they not turn out to become uh, a problem again, a hook, a, 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 a thorn in the flesh of the Europeans that are bringing them in? So these are some important issues that should be addressed. Thank you very much, sir. 
Thank you. I think you raised one important issue as well, the ISIS issue. Nat, may I ask you, what problem are we having with ISIS again in Afghanistan? Can you bring us up to date? ISIS, uh, now they've taken their position, they're going to be fighting. So what continues in essence is only the Taliban is in charge of Kabul, isn't it? Yes, Kabul and part of Kandahar, where the uh, Taliban leader comes from. The, 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 the picture is, it looks like something, you know, America and the U, UK and the Allied forces and NATO went into Afghanistan 20 years ago and drove out the Taliban, the ISIS and Al-Qaeda. Yes. So, yeah, so now that Taliban has taken over, the Americans have, have been told to go home, UK told to go home, the, the, the ISIS now see a free passage to come back to Afghanistan. Same to the Al-Qaeda, to come back into Afghanistan. Uh, now, I, 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 have, I have a serious question. Yes. The deputy president has uh, gone to one of the mountains and he said he will be fighting from there. And we understand he's 48 years old and he's good at fighting. Is that the third one? That the, the yeah, third that, 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 is, that is the there is a, a Afghanistan resistant group. Oh, okay. Mm. Yes. And that, that mountain you are talking of is somewhere in the northeast. Okay. And they are a fighting group on their own. They are they have picked up their arms to fight Al Qaeda, I mean, to I, fight I, I, the Taliban. I'm also interested, just like our viewers will be, uh, the the game that the Western have agreed that they they made in the 20 years was that uh, the Afghanistan will no longer be a land to rear terrorism or terrorists. But uh, with ISIS coming back, uh, it appears that uh, that gain is not particularly real. Uh, um, Mark, is that gain real or is just a, or is just a phantom gain? They said uh, the place will never be a place of, uh, of uh, terrorist grand, training ground anymore. But it appears that with ISIS coming back, it appears that is not longer no longer so. We all know that it's 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 no it's it's not possible. That that's that's the the, the, the grand zero of terrorism. Mm -hmm. Grand zero of terrorism in the world is right there in Afghanistan. Kandahar, like you said, and uh, the Kabul, all these regions. Take note that um, the mountainous terrain of Afghanistan gives them that uh in fact the, the terrain it's is what yeah. yes sir yes and um it, it also um supports such thing because they are mm -hmm. caught up in the midst of the wild uh heavy forest mountainous terrain and uh obviously with people of such uh, uh territory tend to have this militant way of doing things they tend to become very, uh, very, very uh, ferocious and aggressive, you know, because you, you, that that serenity makes them to think of war and fight and all this. And we've known that they've been fighting for years now, thousands and thousands of years. It has not come to an end. So it will not stop now. It will continue. And we will keep seeing fractions coming out of them, fractions and fractions and fractions all to the detriment of mankind is a sad thing is a very very sad thing okay and before we leave this uh, topic of uh, afghanistan uh nat uh, you have experienced the uh, ambassadorial uh things before of the protocol uh, it appears that the the foreign secretary in britain nearly lost his position dominic Raab, for not uh, uh, taking uh, quick intervention seriously. And he did not pick up his phone and he's overstayed with two days. And in the USA, um, they also said Joe Biden uh, has uh, cracked 
his uh, position. Many people who voted for him, they felt very bad. Uh, how did this, how did we all get here when it was just to leave? Why, how, how, why will Britain and the USA be suffering from aftermath? Uh, again, to, to start with you, when there is um, the type of situation we had in Afghanistan, and you yeah. have to, you have been told to go home. Do we do you have something exit strategy? Mm. And then you know the exit date already, and you should walk towards that. But there was what we call total failure in intelligence. Okay. Uh, okay. Bo both in Europe, but both in UK and especially in America, mm. there, there was uh, intelligence failure. You know, you normally should have at least 30 days intelligence of what is happening around you and what is happening around the world so that you can put, uh, put up a roadmap how, on a day-to-day basis. But we see what happened in Afghanistan the, the the intelligence uh, uh, facility in the in the US failed because they were taken away. As the two months became two days and two nights. They, That's correct. They, till the, the Taliban themselves they didn't know they can just throw into into Kabul and take over the presidential palace. They they said uh, the Taliban uh, strolling into the palace in Kabul has become a template for other terrorists. What you do is you infiltrate the existing military personnel, and uh, by the time you are marching in, everyone says, yes, come in. So it's become the Taliban template. Uh, is that the same thing that Nigeria is going to experience, the Taliban the, template? The, the, no template is ever going to be the same because there are so many factors interplaying each other. So you mm. take you take a locality and see the factors that come into play. I have said in one or two other uh, uh, occasions, it looks like the military, the USA did not know that they were just throwing money for these people to, to just take to, to Dubai or to, or to Qatar. They, 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 and it looks like there was a collaboration between the Afghan government and even the Taliban. Is it because, it to, really. it because how, how will uh, the whole military, the whole government just disappear? Mm. And uh, yeah, and you just invite the Taliban to come in. So, this, well, the Afghan president said uh, he's. Uh, he was trying to avert a flow of blood. But quickly, let me just uh, bring, before we go on a short break, uh, let me ask uh, Mark in Milan. Mark, any refugee problem there? Because uh, the, Afghan, the new Afghan president says nobody should uh, be taken, their doctors and nurses should not be taken to the West. Are you going to experience any refugee problems from Afghanistan? Uh, yes, Europe will experience that. But one, one, one thing they are also doing is raising up the camps in some Middle East country. Uh, I know there's a camp that has been raised up in Qatar and uh, Turkey also. Um, but they, they will cut, cater to those camps. Now, mm. at the point also, they might also bring many more into Europe. Uh, Italy will obviously uh, raise up a camp. Um, Spain, France will raise up a camp. France will obviously do that. And uh, Britain has already raised up a camp yeah. in Turkey. Britain yeah. is the one sponsoring the one in Turkey. Yes. Yeah. In Turkey, Britain is sponsoring that. But I also think Britain might also bring some back in, in home too. Because. Um, is, is this not a new development? Not wanting the, the refugees to come into their countries. Eh? Uh, but uh, looking for a third world country to handle a third world country like Turkey and the rest. Is that a new development now? Yes, well, well, that, that, is, uh, that is how it's looking now. Um, well, so, some countries might tap into this. I, I'm seeing also they might go to Africa to tap into this. Already we know Uganda also is taking in some refugees. So, but we don't know on whose arrangement that is. Um, uh, some African countries might tap into it. 
because that will bring some cash into their economy also. And uh, if it is utilized well, those refugees could also add to the uh, labor force um, if they know how to utilize. Especially specialized labor force like doctors, yes. nurses, yes. teachers. Yes, uh, Uganda has tapped in now. Uganda has taken in some refugee. And uh, if the government plans well, that could be a gain to them. Uh, economically and uh, staff strength, labor strength, and all that. So let, let's on see. The how short run, on the short run, Afghanistan lost because uh, yeah. they were in battle for uh, 20 years. On the long run, they're going to lose. All their best brain will have been drained. And I think the new government is trying to say, don't drain us, don't drain us, you know, don't let these people go. Well, fortunately, that may not happen. Um, yes. Well, In fact, not, not only brain drain, you also have a um, skill drain. Uh, yesterday, yeah. they were able to lift all their sports people, the female football team, because wow. obviously the Taliban will kill those women if they had gotten them. You know, they practice Sharia. And under the Sharia law, such things as women involvement in sports. You, can, you cannot show your legs, you cannot show your thighs, chocolates of your chest. Yes, they were able to evacuate all the sport team, female teams, to Australia. And uh, the girls were so excited, thanking the Australian government for taking them out because they would have come for them. They would have come last for them. La last question, and I will ask uh, Nat the same thing. Have we seen the end of Afghanistan crisis, or this is just a, <laughs> we're just midway? In fact, we just uh, what, what we have seen is Afghanistan uh, retrogressing, going backwards, maybe the for fifty years or so. Wow. Yes. So, so we're just uh, half time. Is, yes, the match is not, is not yet over. No, no. Mark, is that the same thing you believe? Afghanistan is 3.0 loading. Well, um, it, it's just it's just a beginning, uh, Dr. Shagun. We are going to see many things happening because um, uh, well, the, 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 the country we relied on for uh, coordination of this whole thing is acting weak, and that's America. So uh, with America acting weak and uh, uh, Europe is not too strong. NATO doesn't have much influence like before. Uh, we are going to be seeing some strange things happening. We're okay, going to you, are, you are an outsider in, from Britain. Do you think uh, our Brexit has affected our status with relationship with America? I mean, nobody's taking us seriously because we don't have the clout of the European Union backing us. You from Milan, do you, will you agree with such a... a, a yes, yes, yes. Um, Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, called Biden yesterday, and he's not been. So all these... Are they, did not discuss, they discussed, didn't they? They discussed, but um, he didn't follow up with the discussion. It was um, a... I mean, just taking the call, yes, yes, yes. You know? So... And I, 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 I listen to uh, Boris Johnson after the discussion with Joe Biden. He could not answer one any of the um, journalist questions directly. Was the date going to be extended? He said, we have evacuated so many people. Was the date going to be extended by the Americans? He said, we have, uh, it, it appears that uh, you are right. He, he, Joe Biden did not take him seriously. He did not take now, him seriously. Yes. The end of the British diplomacy, end of the special relationship. Not what the, in, in, in diplomacy in America, yeah, yeah, in, in diplomacy, such things happen. It is, is, is you are down, you are up, you are down, you are up. But the there are so, so many other factors coming in. Actually, what Boris Johnson was trying to ask for that if the Americans insist that they don't want any deadline, uh, Britain is ready. Britain will want to make sure they, especially around the airport, they are allowed to, to, to make sure everybody is safe, even after the 31st mm -hmm. of um, August. Yeah, and it's And, and again, the, the, the extension to that, 
the extension to that, apart from the uh, failure in intelligence gathering, it looks like individuals, you know, individual, uh, individuals who have played very strategic roles in history, uh, in the area of um, diplomacy, are, are, are no longer there. You remember people like Henry Kissinger? Yes, yes. Henry, but uh, life must move on. Life must yeah. just move on. Well, that, life is moving on what we have. And there is a rise and all those uh, people. Yeah, yes. Well, we, we have to leave it here and go on a short break. When we return, we'll be discussing with uh, current Nigerian politicians uh, whom we have invited, and uh, we'll be looking at what is going on in Nigeria. We'll be discussing the issues of the attack on the Nigerian Defense Academy, Jaji. Uh, these are serious issues, and we need to look at them. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Gen Gen Story Magazine is an African international bi-monthly magazine based in Milan, Italy and founded in 2016. The publication focuses on personalities, fashion, style, entrepreneurship and culture for Africans. The articles on food, movies, fitness, music, travel, sports, technology and books are also featured. Our lives full of best stories, but what can happen in a month? Expand your mind, change your world. Get Shen Gen Story Magazine's full editions. Celebrate an Africans make an impact. Read better, the inside story. Your fashion magazine for a better lifestyle. Inspiring stories for you. Your monthly dose of entertainment. A better mind keeping you updated. Hashtag Shengen Story Magazine. Get Shengen Story Magazine full editions. Thanks for watching News Echo. We are glad you're watching. Now, we want to introduce to you a man from um, Nigeria. He's been a politician, a current politician, and uh, I guess he's in the studio. He's the chairman of Equerry Local Government. And uh, we just want to welcome him uh, to the studio. Do we, studio? Is the one of the greatest local government chairman? Is he in the house? We'll soon get to him. I want to introduce to the rest of the world uh, the chairman of Aquarius Local Government, Chief Nosike Samuel. But I'm trying to see if he's in the house. Well, while we are waiting for him, we'll talk about e We, we have someone from Nigeria, Mr. Vic, Chief Richard Victor. Is uh, Chief uh, Nosiki Samuel in the house? Well, we're having a problem connecting with Nigeria. Uh, let's move on. The Nigerian Defense Academy, we were told, was... Uh, rampage 48 hours ago at about 1 a.m. and uh, three officers were killed. Uh, two were first of all killed and one abducted. Uh, on the final analysis, we were told that the third abducted officer had been killed. We have the officer, uh, Major Stephen Dantong. We have Flight Lieutenant Okoronkwo and uh, and the uh, flight lieutenant Awola, uh, he has also uh, been killed. Three dashing officers, uh, they were killed inside of the Nigerian Defense Academy, Jaji. One of the few places you would think 
is highly secured in Nigeria? No, not secured at all. They went straight. This is what we we'll say. Has the Nigerian military been compromised? Do we have insiders uh, who are working for Boko Haram or who are working for the bandits? Now, we, 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 we saw earlier today someone telling us that um, they were not asking for a ransom, that they were simply making a statement that the Nigerian military is nothing and that they are highly infiltrated. Or else, how will they go into the Nigerian Defense Academy where the highest, the brightest, the strongest should be and just kill and go? And no one has been arrested at least to the best of my knowledge as we speak. Uh, well, 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 well. Um, Nat, 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 you want to update us? Yes, it's, um, it, it's a very sad uh, moment. It's embarrassing. It's unfortunate. It's scandalous, unthinkable uh, of what has happened uh, to Nigerian Defense Academy, popularly known as NDA, located in Kaduna, uh, in Mando area. Uh, and you, you will recollect easily uh, uh, the Afaka uh, Federal College of Forestry and Mechanization. Uh, you, you also recollect that just neighbors is the staff quarters of the Nigerian Port Authority, the you know, Nigerian Airport Authority, because there's an international airport in Kaduna along that axis, Mando Road. Uh, and you, you, you will recollect that there have been other uh, abducting, kidnapping of uh, students uh, in, in Kaduna. And so on that uh, fateful day, um, uh, Sunday morning, uh, 1 a.m., uh, th th these bandits were told went into the NDA disguised, uh, wearing military uniform, and made straight to the staff quarters, and made straight to those three individual officers. Uh, and uh, Killed two. Uh, one I was found dead the, the following morning. One injured in the in the NDA hospital, uh, and the NDA has produced. We we we, we have the history shows NDA course one, and I think at the moment there is that course forty something, and they have produced the the bright and the best military officers in Nigeria. Some of them have gone ahead to be heads of state. Some of them have gone ahead to be uh, chief of army staff, chief of naval staff, and chief of air staff. Uh, maybe apart from Aso Villa and other places, that, that, that should be one of the most fortified facility uh, in, 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 the, in Nigeria as a nation. Uh, because of what that institution stands for. They have even trained non-Nigerians, people coming from other African countries have trained there, the officer uh, Kada. And so for such a thing to happen, there are so many questions to ask. Uh, some will never get answers. Uh, we were told that they, they have CCTV facilities there, but the man who was supposed to be manning the uh, facility to, to, to collect intelligence or to collect information and alert others it was found wanting. It was sleeping on duty, and so many <laughs> other, so many other. Some so that, that is that is where we are at the moment. And as usual, the army have issued a statement uh, to say what to tell the world what happened. And as usual, that they are running after the bandits. You don't run after the bandits one or two days when they are gone. You 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 normally most times the, you you won't get them. They are not there. They are, they've gone so into the. Do we whether the government has said anything at all? Anything from the government? Yeah, the Kaduna State Government, although it's a federal institution, but the Kaduna State Government, the Honorable Minister of uh, of Home and Security. 
Samuel Arwan has issued a statement on behalf of uh, the governor and the behalf of the Ghana State gov Government, uh, sending their condolences to the families of the bereaved, and um, again saying the the even though the government is still on the on this is stand not to pay any ransom, and so this this is this is this is the the position things as of now. I'm going to ask the studio to give us um, uh, a clip of uh, one of the intelligence officers is now retired, but he said some things that we need to hear. Studio, please give us uh, the man who appeared in the channels today and giving the intelligence uh, uh, report that he had. And uh, let's listen to this and then we can take it from there. Let me use the opportunity to welcome uh, Chief Samuel Wano CK, the chairman of uh, Query Local Government in River State. You're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. I'm not a chief, sir. I'm just um, Mr. Wano CK Samuel or Engineer Wano CK Samuel. I think that is better. Okay. okay, Engineer, you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for the opportunity yes. of having me in this wonderful global platform. Yes, we'll be coming to you to ask a few questions. We're just looking at the issue of the attack on NDA. And we have one intelligence man saying this. And I've interrogated a very high-ranking member of this government in 2007-2008 on the issue of Boko Haram. I interrogated him. He's in this government right now. And what was the issue? Boko Haram. And this senior officer was actually let go because he, he was found culpable. But right now he's in the government. You see, we must say the truth because if you don't, this country is going down the precipice. We have been set back more than 60 years right now. We've gone back to the time before 1966 now. And whoever is coming back to repair this country has a lot of work to do. This country has never been polarized, so we cannot run away from it. We have never been this much polarized. I'm a federal person. My mind is federal. My brain is federal. My loyalty is federal. I kill, I do things for the federal government. So I cannot come here and try to be sentimental. No, I'm a federal person. So will your life be at risk now? I don't care. I don't care. And um, my colleagues, they know me. Those people that are listening to me, they know me. I don't care. The issue is that this country is bigger than any individual. That is the issue. This country is bigger than individuals. Buhari will come and go. Uh, eliminating me or killing me will not solve the problem. I will not add to value. But he will come and go. And somebody must come and repair the damage to the psyche of this society. The damage to the polarization, to the nepotism that I've never seen in my life. I work with all these presidents. This is the worst situation I've found myself. And believe me, Internet does not forget. I was part of the people that helped to bring Buhari to government. Because I believe in him. Have you worked with the government after that? After? After you helped bring the government. Oh, of course, I worked with him. We brought him in in 2015, and I work as the deputy director of defense administration. And we have a lot of hope in him. And we actually are ready to do anything for him. What he has turned out over the years is shocking to us. Well, 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 well. President Jonathan once told us that the sponsors of Boko Haram were in his government. Now we've been told very plainly by a high ranking intelligence officer that the sponsors of Boko Haram are still in the government. This man said he interviewed him and he is still part of the government at a high level. That's what he said. Nat, what do you make of this man's exposition? 
Uh, well, the 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 issue of sponsoring is one thing. Jonathan mm. said they were in the government, which means mm. they were occupying positions and offices in the government. Remember, remember the in Bornu State. Uh, just before Mohammed was killed, the the lady of Boko Haram, we, uh, the, the the governor then, Modu Ali Sharif, had three of his commissioners who are Boko Haram members. Mm. It, it is when they fell apart, uh, the the commissioner had to leave the cabinet. So the okay. what, so what, what what this is the situation we have today that the Boko Haram, the fighter sponsors are Nigerians. Mm. They are Nigerians. And people know mm. them. People know where they live. People know where the bandits are. Sheikh, Sheikh Gumi knows where they are in the forest. He gets government uh, cover to go and visit and talk with them. So we, we, we will come back to this uh, because we have a guest all the way from Nigeria engineer samuel who has been the chairman and uh, we understand that he has 12 things to commission or maybe he has started commissioning them again i welcome you to the program thank you very much for this opportunity um please uh, our viewers we like to meet with you tell us a little bit about yourself let's know what you have been doing so that uh, the world will know that uh, Nigeria is made up of local government, states, and finally the federal government. Tell us more about you, sir. Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Juan Osuke Sam, Engineer Juan Osuke Samuel. I'm from Omagwa. Omagwa is a community and a political ward called Ward 9 in the local government area of River State, the south south part of Nigeria. And as far as uh, me and my team, we are concerned, we believe that the drafters of the constitution of this great country called Nigeria meant well for this nation. But um, even in science, even in engineering, there is no machine that is devoid of uh, coefficient of error or plus or minus um, um, error deficiencies. Because if you have any instrument or um, 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 machine that does not have that coefficient of error, then you're talking about that being a spirit. And so the drafters of the constitution in thinking that they want to bring government closer to the grassroots people decided in the 1976, if I'm correct, to say that, that Nigeria will have a top tier government called the local government councils. And in Nigeria we have 774 of these local government councils. And fortunately enough, my local government council happens to be one of the ancient local government council that was created immediately after uh, Nigeria came out of the menace of the Civil War. And we met, me and my team in 2018, uh, met a local government system that was dead and out. A local government system where young men were bearing light weapons, AK-47 and machine guns and walking the streets of our local government area in the name of courtism and uh, 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 militancy. But as God may have it, we know that that is not the way to develop our place. That is not the way to make life meaningful or people have value for the activities of human beings. And so we decided to say, no, we will rewrite our story ourselves. We make these selfless sacrifices to make sure the presence of governance is felt at the total level. And so we came up with a five-point agenda to the people of Ukraine local government who has 13 political wards. And so in those five-point agenda, first of it was to fight insecurity. And the second one was to rebuild the critical infrastructures that have been destroyed and dilapidated in the local government area. The third of it is to send our people back to farm. Because growing up, I was trained by my parents and my grandmother, knowing that we are peasant farmers and hunters and small scale fishermen. So, that the way we survived as a people was to do these trades and uh, this uh, 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 culture and activities. 
And at the end of the day, um, the, 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 fourth, the fourth agenda was to send the people back to school. And the fifth one is to improve in the healthcare system of our place. And when we went around the 13 political wards of Ikole local government, our people listened to us keenly and agreed with us that our political formula or uh, that is in form of agenda, the five-point agenda we brought to them, that it is something they would want to give a try. And when they gave us the opportunity via their votes, we were sworn into office 18th of June 2018 for our first time in office, knowing that the local government systems in Nigeria, as um, um, uh, uh, amended by the River State of Assembly local government law, um, says that we must have a three-year term. And so we knew that what was our problem was time and resources. Knowing how rich Nigeria has come to uh, has become now, uh, in this current day, APC failed federal government leadership. And we had to say, look, this is time to roll up our sleeves, make great sacrifices, keep ourselves hungry, and rebuild that which they think is not possible. And Thank you very much, Engineer. Let me just quickly ask you, what's the state of security in your local government? We saw that the River State House of Assembly just passed a bill uh, stopping uh, road grazing and uh, that uh, they're not going to accept uh, grazing and ranching on their roads. Uh, so what's the state of security in Equatorial local government right now? By the grace of God Almighty, the, uh, the state of security in the current local government is good. I can say good because our people have, have gone back to farms. Our people who ran away from their various communities have returned home. All our aged parents that are living in urban areas have come back home. People are now having ceremonies, wedding ceremonies, burial ceremonies, wrestling festivals, and other activities. Industries are springing up. Investors are now coming back. What we had in the past, we are investors, we have been kidnapped and they lose their life, so they run away. So now, the local government is the first of the first rise. Yes, talking about the um, grazing uh, uh, act, because it's now an act, has been signed into law by the governor of the state. Um, you remember that the 17 uh, 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 Satan governors met first in uh, Asaba, took a position met again in Lagos, took another position, and we agree with the position of the, of the certain governors. Because we have a situation where men who we don't know come into our communities, attack our mothers, attack our fathers in the farms, rape our women, butcher our people, graze in our lands, keep our people hungry, and when we don't have where to run to. So, and we know that this open grazing is a cake. It, it's, 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 it's gone and gone forever. Because none of our laws agrees to it. There is no proper documentation to say that these are the grazing routes they are even talking about. And so, ranching is the way to go in the modern day, knowing what is happening all over the world. Cattle rearing in the business like a man who is running a, uh, a, a tailoring house. And so, we are saying that if you want to do the issue of cattle rearing, you should be able to get a piece of land and ranch your cattle. Get your feet for the cattle. Use the modern technologies that are not even difficult. They're all in the internet. They are in, the, they are in, the, they are in Google. The Google will show you what it is. That's the current technology that you need to use to improve the fertility of your cow, produce good meat, produce healthy, 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 healthy milk, and make more money. And so we believe that our brothers and sisters who are into this business should know that a time has come where they need not to cut corners anymore. Because what was happening is that. They are spending little and making so much by being open grazing. But now, the conflict of development has come. People are building in a lot of land owned by them. And they are shrinking the spaces. So nobody has to grow. So when you get a place, declare a ranch and make sure you keep yourself safe. If somebody now comes to your ranch to come and rush to your car, the government will come to your, to your, to your protection. And you two okay, cannot okay, go to Okay, 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 okay. engineer. Engineer Samuel, uh, thank you very much. I have my colleagues, one in London, and the other in Milan, and they would like to ask you questions. Are you ready for their questions? I'm ready, I'm ready. Yes, not in the city of London. Uh, what would you like to ask Engineer Samuel? He has 12 uh, commissioning to do, and uh, he is one of the utmost local government chairman among the 774 local governments, as he has explained. Do you have any question for him? Yes, one or two questions. Uh, Engineer Samuel, 
once again you welcome to this program thank you very and, much sir. and uh, if you don't mind we want to ask you what what you 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 said you are first you are concerned you are satisfied with the security in your local government how about other parts of river state and nigeria is there any concern for the degree of security we have yes great concern <laughs> as i'm talking to you i have three young kids that god has given to me my first son is um 17 going to his 18 years he's not with me he's in school and it will be a, a bizarre situation for me to be called up on phone and say that the school where he is has been attacked by bandits. I, I can't I, I can't even sit down here to walk. And so waking up this morning, in fact, yesterday when that news broke that um, the Nigerian Defense Academy in Kaduna was attacked, I was shocked because then then nowhere is safe. It shows clearly listening to I listened to the Chinese television program. In fact, I want to say publicly here that the gentleman that spoke this morning is a true Nigerian. If I have my way. I will go and buy a bottle of drink, like my father taught me, and the cola, and go and thank him for standing by to say, even if it's going to cost my life, truth has to be told to the world, to know those who are be behind what is happening in happening to our nation. You heard him clearly. He said the bandits are living close to the NDA college, and that even that that cadets have been kidnapped in the time past, and that they paid four hundred thousand naira as ransom. So the, that even the cadets we are released, they explained that why they were in their cap, in, the, in the in the hands of their cap and their, their captors that they were hearing the parades, which means it was just a walking distance from where they were taken from. So the point we are, we are we are making is that if you see the effort the man said they made in bringing President Muhammad Buhari, which was not their their, their their fault because they are not spirits, everybody believed. And I tell my friends, it was even good that Buhari became president. Because if Buhari did not become president in 2015, would I still be hoping that he would have been the Messiah that would have solved this problem? But it is clear and obvious that he has finished living his life, as far as I'm concerned. So it is now left for us, who are young people, who still have what it takes to stand as Nigerians, to now say, look, now people are not telling us what the problem is. How do we solve this problem? Insecurity is a big problem in Nigeria. And like he said, we have gone 60 years backward. And until we realize that this issue of nepotism, ethnicity, and religion should be jettisoned, and that the constitution of Nigeria should be the, the main foundation for every activities and our coexistence, then we don't have any solution to solve this problem. And let me also say, like he also said, he said, irrespective of whoever is coming to power after President Muhammad Buhari, if Nigerians don't jettison these three issues I've talked about, that person will still fail as the president of this country, no matter whatever, whoever, even if you bring him from Harvard, he will fail. So the truth of the matter is that sabotaging your own nation is an unforgivable sin. And we are saying clearly that as Nigerians, we have the right to belong to any religion we want to practice. Our constitution has said that we live in a free society and that people should know that where their rights begins and ends is where the next man's rights be begins. And so, as far as we are concerned, today, President Mohamed Barre and his APC-led administration have no excuses to make again. In fact, himself, last week, when he met with the service chief, said that, please, he has given them the last matching order, that he doesn't want to leave government as a failure. He has seen clearly that he has, he's, he has failed. What time does he have? Very soon, we are going to go into serious politicking. And when we go into serious politicking, <laughs> nothing, nothing can be done again. So, what we are saying is that the days of making excuses are gone. We need to start sitting down and again. You, our brothers and our sisters in diaspora, should please do us the favor of knowing that nobody will build this nation other than we Nigerians. And the more you realize that where you live today, we are built by men and women who went through pains to be where you're living today, then you have to start thinking of coming home with the experience you have, with the resources you have, to come and join force with us. We can't run away from our nation. We can't run like Afghan people running and hoping that America will do magic. We must stand as Nigerians. We are 200, 200 million people. And less than 1 million people are holding us down. I don't believe that. But it's making me go crazy whenever I think about it. We don't, it's not to Canada that we win this war. It is our will, our political will. Imagine, uh, uh, imagine 10 million Nigerians hitting the streets of Nigeria in protest. There's no force in Nigeria that can stop them. There's no barrel of gun that can stop them. 
and saying enough is uh, enough. It's either you allow the constitution become the grand norm of our coexistence, or you divide the nation. Because that is the only Thank solution. Thank you very now. much, engineer. Uh, I, I believe uh, Nat has another question. Or uh, shall I go to Italy? Yeah, okay, let go a short one. Uh, Engineer thank Samuel, you. thank you for the response. My last question is, what are your thoughts and concerns for Nigeria as we approach 2023? We must, for once, get a credible leader, irrespective of the color of his skin or his ethnic group, his religious background, a leader that is ready to be a true Nigerian, a patriotic Nigerian, a leader that should know that Nigerians have the right to live anywhere they choose to live in the seven and four local governments in this nation. That is the leader that Nigeria is waiting for. It has nothing to do with your, the, the level of political experience you have, no. But we want a true Nigerian that can say, yes, I understand this problem and I'm ready to prove a solution to it. I am not interested where my cabinet will come from. I'm not interested where the service chief should come from. I am interested in who can do this job. What do we need to do that the constitution allows us to do based on the available resources that we have? It is not how many times you fall that is the problem. It is how many times you have the ability to pick up yourself and dust yourself and continue in that race that is the way forward. And so my thought for Nigeria is that Nigeria should know that it is a shame that you say you've gone through the four walls of any institution, you have whatever capacity and have whatever wealth, and you allow less than one million persons control the destiny of over 200 and something million of us, and we are here making stories and holding symposiums and holding talk shops. The time to stop talking and working is now. We should stand up as Nigerians, dust our PVC cards, and get ready to vote into power men with credible characters that are ready to provide the a team that will deliver the diligence of democracy to the people of Nigeria. Thank you, engineer. Let's go to our man in Milan, Italy. Uh, uh, Mark, you have listened to the chairman. Uh, do you have any question for him? Yeah, yes, thank you, Dr. Oshagam. Uh, engineer Samuel, you're welcome. Once thank again, you we congratulate you on your 100 days in office in your second term. Thank second you very much. Term. Uh, I, I did small background check on you, and I'm impressed with what I see. I see uh, a chairman that is really out for the job. Um, I'm not flattering you, but with what I saw in your uh, links, your Facebook, your uh, websites, I'm impressed with some of the projects. Now, my simple question is, what do you, how do you go about, uh, Inquiry is a major local government in River State. And River State as a whole is um, the special chicken that one of the special chicken that bears the golden egg in Nigeria. So, how do you go about uh, harnessing these uh, um, uh, the the mineral resources in River State, working with the, the state government, and uh, using it to uh, bring up more science and technological um, um, uh, plants in the state? science and technology the, the the root of country's progress is in science and technology and it, it should be encouraged from the grassroots the chairman level the local government and the state so what are your plans on that science and technology in river state inquiry local government thank you okay. I, I thank you for this question but this question i will answer it in different uh, uh, fronts one before you give me the um, opportunity of uh, uh, thinking towards that direction of uh, using science and technology to impact on the development of my people. You should understand that I have um, a predicament, and the predicament is the constitution of Nigeria as we have it today. The issue of we the people, which the military gave to us and said we the people. A few people sat down and decided to share this country and do the country the way they want. So we are saying, that if you if a local government can have the ability to invite foreign investors to invite technical experts from all over the world we live in a global world today i'm communicating with a lot of my friends who i had opportunity of going to university with i've had problems of meeting one way or the other and they are willing to come down to nigeria but the question is there are processes and the constitution is the major problem and that's what we're talking about is structuring 
For instance, how do I take a program of inviting an investor without getting the clear, needed clearance? And those clearance you must get for those investors to come into this nation. And that's why the constitution is an issue. And so for the one the things the constitution has provided for me to do, I am seizing the opportunity to do them. And I want you to limit my questions or my answers on the present constitutional provisions I have. But that's the truth. I don't like living, uh, thinking uh, abstractly when I know it's not the reality. The reality that we have is that the constitution as it's today, the next time that constitution has to be amended. First of all, we must understand that all over the world, democracy all over the world, recognizes that third tier government is the most important government in every society. For instance, where you live, you know that the city councils are most important than even the state and even the government at the center. You know that. Even our brother who is in London knows that the mayor of London is very powerful. That uh, 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 Boris Johnson can't throw him around because of the way their laws are structured. But here, which local government chairman would dare make a statement or state his heart to say this is the way we need to solve this problem? And the next day, you know what will happen. But I know that the leader will emerge that will take the bull by the horn and say, enough is uh, enough. And that's the leader we are waiting for. Look at what happened in our National Assembly. We just asked for a, an issue, a simple issue. We wanted to have a credible election. We say, the experience we have had, I, for one, I am, I am talking from the point of no. Because in 2015 election, I was beaten by the military. I was almost stripped naked. If not for God saving my life, I would have lost my life. A lot of my colleagues are not here today because of that action. We won election. Our brother wrote to Mr. Bika Metu, who is the current Minister of Transportation in the Buhari administration, because he was a city governor who didn't work for the people of River State. The people of River State voted against him woefully, and he lost, and he was the poster boy of President Muhammad Buhari. Because of his ego that was bruised, he decided to take the powers of the military, going house to house to be beating us up. He came and seized the collection center, shooting day and night, cutting all our resorts away, and we had to end in the tribunal because resort sheets you are torn left, right, and center. So we're saying that why don't the National Assembly understand that this problem is for all of us? When we are talking about this, may so rest in peace. Who died in this uh, 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 attack done by bandits a few days ago? Probably he wouldn't have known that the day will come when bandits will attack NDA. He wouldn't have known. He would have, if you tell him, he would say it's not possible. They wouldn't even dare it. But it has happened. So we are saying that, look, why do we need to lose the life of INEC workers, the lives of the lives of voters, the lives of security agents on election day? Why don't we just sit in our polling units? We vote. The technology is as simple as ABC. Nigeria is called. I read electrical engineering my first degree. In my master's degree, I did disaster risk management. In my PhD, which I'm running up in, in a few weeks from now, I am doing disaster risk management too. Nigeria has been captured through the uh, satellite. You, no part of Nigeria that you cannot reach through satellite. And so INEC cannot tell us. And INEC can say, look, we have the capacity to transmit election results from pooling units. That's the only way we can get a credible leader. Because if the market woman knows that Mr. Amadi is the man that will be the president of Nigeria, that will make her go to market and go to farm without being harassed, you don't need to tell her. She will vote Mr. Amadi in her pooling unit. But when the result leaves the pooling unit at the collection center, those who do not want Mr. Mali to come and change the narrative we have today, we use the force of the military and the force of coercion police and change the results and go and bring one AD who is their cohort, who has nothing upstairs to give to Nigerians. And at the end of the day, we'll be running through this circle. People will be dying of... Imagine, imagine the situation where our doctors are on strike and on a daily basis people are dying. Meanwhile, doctors who are in Buhari's cabinet are making matters worse, not minding the lives that we are losing in Nigeria. What kind of country is this? And so, this question you're asking me has a blockage. Simple answer to you is that until we amend the constitution of Nigeria, a local government chairman cannot do what you expect us to do. So that means we are caught up in uh, in the web of uh, retrogression instead of progression. Okay. Of course, you know that. And that's why investors will never come to Nigeria. No investor is ready to bring his money to Nigeria and joke with his money. Money is hard to come by. And the, that, that is the second, understand the power of money. That, yes, that's the second question I was about to put. 
how your from your chairman level how you can co co cooperate and uh, work more collaborate with Nigeria uh, equerry people that are in diaspora you see one one missing link uh, in Nigeria is that uh, the politicians don't realize that Nigerians in diaspora have a vast vast amount of knowledge and uh, they've seen how things are done in the Western world so it's to your advantage if you can look out for your query people that are in that are outside of Nigeria and see how you can collaborate with them, bring in some new ways of uh, uh, progress, some new ways of ease of doing uh, of governance in your local government. Um, that that would be a game added to what you're doing. What do you let think? Me, let, I'm sorry, let, let, let me just butt in, sir. We have done that. A few months ago, I was in contact with uh, my query brothers who live in Canada and America. And what was the issue? This discussion me and you were having now. And when I said, okay, if we can bring in technical capacity, there are things we can bring in. We can bring in the health capacity to touch the lives of our people. And I brought in, by the grace of God, 112 medical practitioners in conjunction with Obaki Query, I brought them into Nigeria, I brought them to Ikwere local government in Adanta. I rebuilt a, hot, a, a head center. I rebuilt a head center for them to use to administer proper health service to Ikwere people. In the 60 Ikwere speaking communities, the four Ikwere local government. In the Ikwere, Ikwere speaking people in River State occupy four local governments called Potakot City, Obiapo, Emoa, and Ikwere local government. And these doctors willingly accepted. And in fact, it was at the peak of COVID. They took exemptions from their very important workplaces, medical consultants, and they came to Nigeria. They brought foreign drugs. They brought expertise. And they administered this drug. For two weeks, they were in Nigeria. And I asked them, how is it you can build world-class medical facilities in Nigeria? Well, they say it's possible, it's doable. But there's a problem. For you to even bring in the drugs they came in with, to give to our poor people in Nigeria, it was a problem. They had to do a lot of contact, a lot of pressure, talking to the embassy and giving them the reason why elderly people who are dying in the villages should be attended to. And a lot of people also, a lot of, of the drugs didn't even come through normal processes. Because some of the drugs you even see, even as I'm talking to you, who would believe this? Nobody would believe it. And so until we reject the constitution of Nigeria, we will still be going through this. I can tell you, sir, I have okay. friends. I'm lucky to have friends all over the world. And my friends are ready to come to Nigeria. But somebody needs to allow them to pass through the gates. And that's the man that holds the key. The man that holds the key is the number one man at the center. Does the man believe that Nigerians need to be alive? If you believe that Nigerians need to be alive as the president of this nation, he would have called the Minister of Labor to order. By now, DJ should have been sacked as a Minister of Labor. The Minister of Health should have been sacked for the death of Nigerians over unnecessary issues. Things that are not worth it. What is five point something billion when people are stealing hundreds of billion and not being prosecuted in this nation under the Barrier administration? Mm. All right, we have the last question for you, sir. Um, the PIB has been passed into an act. We now have the Petroleum Industry Act, and we know that you are sitting on top of the oil. To what extent do you believe in that act? Because we are told that a three percent will be for the those who are bringing the oil and 30% to search for oil where they will never find, they have never found. What is the reaction of River State and the South South region towards this PIA? Well, I thank you. I like the statement you made. You made that I am sitting on the oil. Yeah, that is the story. They say nearest to the warehead, more difficult to get the resources. Those who are close to the warehead doing the drilling are the ones dying out of all the uh, hazards uh, associated mm. with oil exploration. Why those who sit in the comfort of private jets and yachts all over the world are signing documents and making the phone calls and enjoying the largesse that they don't know how the sufferings of the people are going through. Well, there's nothing to be said anymore. If the, Saturn, the 17 Saturn governors took a position and the National Assembly jettisoned it and voted otherwise, what again? They won't, they don't, they're not interested. They have bragged that we are conquered people. Mm. So we'll leave it at that. Uh, Engineer Samuel, it's been a pleasure, and we hope to get to have you very soon.
because uh, we are yet to know the 12 things we want to commission and i'm sure there will be enough time for us to look into that in, in the if, nearest if you, just give me, if you just give me two, two uh, 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 30 seconds i don't leave them out to you one okay quickly because in, the one we two, want to know in what two is what two we are commissioning the 1000 sitting capacity town hall every project in the Korean local government we are agreed by the words because before we went into this election in our first term, we had time world meetings with all critical stakeholders of each world. And they told us what their problem is. In our dialect, they said, if you have two things, one is greater. Because of the little resources and short, short time, which is bedeviling every government all over the world, when you get to come into office, you, can, you cannot carry everything and do them at once. You take them quick, quick, the ones you can handle. So in this World War II, we are, doing, we are commissioning a town hall in uh, LLA Watre, we are commissioning a market stable, 26 market stable with uh, toilet facilities and uh, 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 office for a market master. In what four, we are commissioning a one kilo, uh, 1.2 kilometer drain that to solve the drainage problem they have in what four, what four is in LLA. In what five, we are commissioning a 26 stable market with uh, toilet facilities and a town hall. Uh, this is for, in what six, we are, we are, we, we will not, what six is not part of those. The, the world will concern that project because we had an issue. So we, we, we are starting the we, we, we are starting we, we are starting the construction of that uh, project next week, and so we're not going to be part of the program. That's why it's not going to be that. It's going to be two of. Now, in what seven we are going to commission a hospital, a health center, if you might call it. In what eight we are commissioning a defeating police station. Remember, building a police station is the work of the federal government. But the federal government does not care whether the security of Ukraine local government people is on top gear or not. So they keep impoverishing the police. I can't imagine a policeman buy his belt, buy his boots, buy his police uniform, and you're expecting him to do magic. So we have decided to, to be the brand new police station for uh, uh, what A2B man, which is Rotary Tumika Metis Ward. Rotary Tumika Metis Ward. The President Minister for Transportation. <laughs> Let's emphasize on that. In Ward 9, which is my ward. We are commissioning a 16 classroom block built for a secondary school. We are commissioning a 1016 capacity town hall built for our, our traditional institutions. We are also, by the grace of God Almighty, going to commission a 100 uh, lock-up shop and 180 stable market for Omagwa people. If, you, if you've been to a local government, call it a bushmeat center. The only place where you get our original African spice or recipe, if you okay. might think about it, call that way. Okay. Now, and in that project, we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are working in collaboration with NDDC, so I must make it clear because NDDC saw what we are doing in the Korean local government, saying that the drafters of the NDDC act said these are the local government they should go and partner with. And the Korean local government is on record, the Korean local government is the first local government, NDDC, as a federal government entity, is partnering with to achieve a goal. In what ten, okay. we are going to commission a, 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 a fourteen classroom block for a primary school with a staff room and all the rest. In what uh, eleven, which is Ozoha, we are connecting them to the national grid. Don't also forget when I became chairman in two thousand eighteen, the Korean local government where Rutmi Abeche comes from has been out of the national grid for three years. It was my team and I, by the grace of God, that reconnected the entire Korean local government from a whole substation. Down to a Korean local government, and today we are up in the national grid. In what in what uh, uh, twelve uh, Gruta, we are going to commission a modern hospital for the good of the people of Gruta. In what thirteen, we are commissioning a fifteen classroom block for the primary school in uh, uh, what they call it in uh, uh, in Alo. Alo is the last one, and that's the ward that is hosting the University of Portacot. So okay, how many important. how many years do you have to do all these commissions? This permissioning will start first week of October and it will run for three okay. weeks. And after okay. three weeks, because we will, we will come back to place. you. Yeah, we will come back to you to ask for you in two or three years whether you have accomplished everything you have told us. No, for you remember the first time I had the opportunity of being here, so I told you that we, I, we, we are going to rebuild the Korean local government secretariat, and yes. by the grace of God Almighty. God made it come to pass. We started that project 24th of November 2020 and uh, 2019, and we completed that project in 24th of November 2020. 
by the grace of God, it was commissioned by on, the governor of Nigeria. Uh, uh, on behalf of Nigeria's in diaspora, we just must thank you, Engineer Samuel, and uh, you have uh, shown us that uh, we still have some politicians who are good administrators and making things happen. Uh, all this commissioning that you have said, I'm sure all our colleagues all over Europe and America who have listened to you, they will want to ask us in two or three years' time that uh, have you people gone to check whether all of them? So we will be checking on you. No, no, that, that, that's not to bother. Your team, the Ben TV mm -hmm. is going to be what we do in the Korean local government. The uh, Nigerian Union of Journalists, River State Chapel, is part of our team when we go for inspection. So Ben okay. TV is part of Nigeria Union of Journalists. So as I'm okay. telling you, each day we go for the commissioning, they will have uh, clips to send to you so that you see practically. We don't believe in storytelling. We know it All is right. possible. But people don't want to do it because they want to see money. And the only problem is that even when they finish stealing the money, they still end up after a few months poor and still come back to beg and sell all their properties. And they're still going yes. back to the money. I don't understand what yes. they're thinking. The stolen, money is, stolen money is never good. We'll just do it like that. Thank you very much, Engineer Samuel. We go on a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at the wedding of the century. Or was it a stolen wedding? Don't go away. We'll be right back. Gem Gang Story Magazine is an African international bi-monthly magazine based in Milan, Italy and founded in 2016. The publication focuses on personalities, fashion, style, entrepreneurship, and culture for Africans. The articles on food, movies, fitness, music, travel, sports, technology, and books are also featured. Our lives full of best stories. A lot can happen in a month. Expand your mind, change your world. It's Shen Gen Story Magazine's full editions. Celebrate an Africans make an impact. Read better. The Inside Story, your fashion magazine for a better lifestyle, inspiring stories for you, your monthly dose of entertainment, a better mind keeping you updated. Hashtag Schengen Story Magazine. Get Schengen Story Magazine full editions. Welcome back to News Echo. We want to discuss a few things that are very important uh, for our nigerians in diaspora to have understanding but uh, what happened over the last weekend um, yusuf buhari you remember him the man who was riding on motor bike and had an accident but to god be the glory he's alive after he had been uh, uh, taken on to nigerian hospital and german hospital but he's alive and uh, he went to on to marry his sweetheart, they met in sorry, and I'm talking of Zara Bayero. And uh, we understand allegedly that billions of naira were spent uh, in that wedding. Um, we were told that over 50 aircrafts flew into Kanu and that there was a lot of food, wine, definitely there were a load of dancing. Uh, uh, studio, let's have uh, what happened in the, in, uh, the, yes, is that one of those things that were given away, yes, they were, they gave Pro Max uh, telephone as a takeaway, they gave um, uh, iPad as takeaway, and uh, they said for every guests that was invited they took away about 1.2 million naira worth of gift uh, and of course with the uh, sign of yz that is yusufu and zara now listen to uh, watch how they were taken to the venue did you see it was the horse that took them to the venue are you seeing what i'm seeing yes uh, that was uh, uh, yusuf wari and uh, zara being taken but there were more dancing in the Oh, 
Okay, let's stop there. Let me ask you now a few questions. Uh, 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 no, let's stop the studio. Let's just ask. We will come back to this one because uh, the dancing here was something else. Uh, but let's uh, let's. Uh, uh, okay, that's the boss one. Nat, you have watched all of these. Uh, number one, was there no social distancing anymore in Nigeria at the time? We understand there is a spike at the moment. Number two question. Um, we are given the impression that the northern culture does not support this kind of uh, dancing to Naira, Mali, to Davido, but that's not where what we have seen, not only in this one, but in other subsequent parties of uh, the northerners. They dance to all of these uh, R&B and the rest. W what was your take, Nat? Well, I... <coughs> I, I, I think some of some of the some of the display we have we have seen. Uh, I'm not sure the Isba Isba police will allow that to happen, <laughs> but it looks like they just uh, turned their their face away and they joined they join in the dancing, the merrymaking, the singing, and other things. Uh, the, 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 there, are, there are some of the things I saw in some of these uh, video clips that are uh, uh, antisocial, in, in, uh, let me use that word, uh, be, 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 because uh, if we go by the COVID-19 protocol, which was observed in the bridge, in mm. high bridge there, uh, we, we should we should expect maybe a, a hike or a spark of uh, those who may take test positive uh, uh, very soon. And I, I, as you said, it, it's, a, it's a cultural thing. But you know, you know, there there's a lot of copying these days. Uh, you, if you find uh, Naira Mali, what's name playing Abuja, uh, and uh, the COVID nineteen says you cannot play. Uh, there, so so, so 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 many things, so many things were turned upside and, uh, down. And the stupendous money spent, where did it come from? I thought oh, Gwari didn't have a lot of money. That definitely, that is one of the challenges we have today in Nigeria. A private affairs become an official function, and the, the taxpayers' money uh, is being used to sponsor these things. We heard of we heard of the. 50 to 100 private jets that were lined up in Kano Airport, uh, bringing in and bringing out uh, individuals again. Uh, to hire a private jet will not cost you anything less than $50,000. And uh, if you're going to keep it maybe for a longer time, you may have to top up the, the money. Uh, so th th those governors, who are there, some of them, some of the state, or most of the state have not been able to pay the salaries of the civil servants, basic minimum wage, 30,000 naira per month. They have not paid, but they can afford not only to hire private jets, but to come and, to come and, uh, and do some other funny, funny things. So we... Uh -huh. Th th thank you, Nat. Mark, um, it appears that uh, the, the Buari administration is not sensitive to what the average Nigeria is going to in a country where the majority of people are living less than $2. This is the kind of thing he could show. And yet some of his supporters believe he's still a prudent man. Thank you, Doc. Um when I saw that whole event, I, I felt very bad um, because, like you just said, and the Ambassador Nat is saying, right there in their midst are people languishing in poverty, abject poverty, and there is this heavy show of wealth 
So uh, we begin to think the questions you used to ask those days. Um, what has happened to our emotion? Uh, mm. People, yes, it looks the, the emotions of a lot of people are dead in Nigeria. People don't have that human feelings again. You know, uh, well, weddings are special days. They are very remarkable moments of the, of the couple's life. Um, the people want to have their weddings well, well properly done, well celebrated, but. Uh, when it becomes over exaggerated in in this in this time of real scarcity, uh, time of COVID again, we, we also did not talk about um, how th they were not socially um, distancing themselves. Mm. And, uh, they, they, and these are government people. The governors will go back home and tell their people uh, social distance, stay on the line, don't touch your do, don't do that. And now they all converge in one big place not minding those rules that they have set so um there's much hypocrisy there is the hypocrisy of also um listening to the western song and it is then also that says sharia doesn't permit this so we, it's, <laughs> so so all animals are equal but some are more no, equal than the others isn't it? That, that's what it is though so um it's hypocrisy uh, some oh, people don't believe Mark, that. Mark, we don't have much time. Let's just leave this wedding. I mean, many people have said he's nauseating, he's unbelievable, and uh, this is a guy who we understand does not have a particular job. Uh, his wife, uh, Zara, is still a student, and so so many things are just being said that uh, it's just a, 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 a money drain affair. But let's leave that as it may. Let's go to proper celebrations and we're flying straight to worry in delta state the olu of worry was a, a young man uh, who was crowned uh, is a young man who was crowned uh, a few days ago can we have uh, the exact coronation uh, picture of him uh, this gentleman he spoke he spoke oh, Shakri de de Mokanga o Omiwaya de de Mokanga o Omiwaya de de Mokanga o Eye ekoruwe Shakri re Ojo nu wewe O se mu sire gida ba je koruwe Lori go Omoba Prince Chen Wali, Emiko, Chen Shola, Emiko. I don't know where to share Mushi Wewe, Nagbaranga, Mwafe Joko, no way. Boko, Demi Deu. Shakri de de Bokao. Shakri de de Bokao. Shakri de de Mokanga o Ajanwe and efe jo keruge Norugo otere Uche chola emiko no jonwe we Shakri de mi de un Shakri de de Mokanga o Shakri de de Mokanga o Mofe de kobere
Shakri de de. Awo to game de de. O game ye na da be ye na. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please let me stand on the existing protocol. I want to officially announce to a Shakri nation, to the whole world, the title of our 21st Olu of Wari Kingdom. His title is Atu Washedi Third. Well, 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 well. Uh, many people have acknowledged that this man has got a load of things to do, not only for the Shakiri nation, but for Nigeria. And when we listen to his speech, after he had been crowned, he was speaking that he would bring great reformation to the Shakiri land, to Nigeria, and indeed the whole of Africa. That was his speech. Um, many have prophesied that this man had been waited for we saw President Olusha Gobasojo going to kneel down and putting his head on his knees. That has been a very significant thing. If Olusha Gobasojo could go and kneel down to him and put his head between his knees, it speaks a volume. And uh, Nat, what are the other things we are hearing about uh, the Atunwa Shedi thought of Shakiri Land? Well, the 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 coronation itself uh, is planned for, for the starting Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and the Thanksgiving on the Sunday. I have not I have not seen anything like this before, and um, there are a lot of things to learn uh, to to take home to take to take to take away to take home. To, to, to take time to meditate and uh, really think of the, the, the strengths. The, His Royal Highness, uh, Atu Ashe the Third, is 37 years old. I'm sure you heard me very well. He's not yet 40, he's not 50, he's not 60. And uh, again, as Dr. Chegun said, from he says his speech after the after uh, being crowned. He, he he sang Christian praise songs. Uh, I'm not I've not heard or seen that uh, before. Maybe maybe maybe. And he was so prophetic in his pronouncement. Uh, he 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 is a ray a ray of hope for not only Delta State, uh, South, South, Nigeria, and Africa. Uh, we, we want to believe that, and the number of other uh, people that spoke uh, about this coronation, uh, there are people whom we should take, the West we should take very, very seriously. And we want to see this as uh, a new beginning not only for the worry uh, kingdom uh, uh, delta state uh, south south uh, nigeria and africa so we we, uh, we 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 are looking forward to to see these things unfold and we thank you in, in our Mark Milan, uh, we understand that some prophecies came about this man and uh, this may shock the rest of the world. I happen to have interviewed his uh, grandfather before. Many years ago, we met at a place in Akure when Mimiko, uh, when Emiko was the uh, governor of Fondo State, and uh, I was privileged to go. And in Akure, I met the man, and uh, we became friends before he went to be with the Lord. What's prophetic about this Atuma Shady thought? Uh, Ma. Indeed, very prophetic. Um, we we the, the ceremony itself. If you look look very deep, you will see that it has some it has some spiritual 
uh, coronation with it. Um, first of all, looking at the crown, we've never had most African kings have crowns with the cross, the sign of the cross. But his mm. crown had the sign of the cross. And that's mm. very, very, very spiritual. Number two, the man's speech, Atuashe III, his speech resonates a lot of um, spiritual um, emphasis. He talked about how God will help to bless the land, how God will help them use the, mineral, uh, the, the good of the land to bless the people. He also did something very remarkable, and that is um, revoking a curse. Uh, interestingly, yes, we, that, we, didn't know, we didn't know about that curse, but mm -hmm. the whole now know, and uh, he has revoked it. Now, bearing in mind that uh, that part of Nigeria is one of the regions that adds up to the value of Nigeria with the yeah. oil and the gas. And uh, if there is that pronouncement of, uh, if there is that revoking of a, a, a curse, that means blessing has come. For those of us yeah. that are, are biblical, that, that's very deep. Um, it's mm. a new era because th this is the people bringing the, the, the wealth to the country and uh, is now being blessed. So it's like bringing food to your visitor and blessing the food before the person has it. Obviously, that food is blessed. And uh, okay. uh, it's thank a, you very much for that uh, illusion, uh, for that uh, vision. So that what you have just uh, said now, we move from one coronation to the other. Um, in Zambia, there's another coronation of a new president. He used to be in opposition, but it's by Mr. Hakanidi Hikilema. But Nat, you want to bring us up to today what's happening in Zambia? Okay, thank you very much. Um, Zambia is in uh, the eastern part of Africa. Uh, you, 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 when you talk of Zambia, you also talk of Malawi, you're talking of Botswana, you're talking of Tanzania, and mm. uh, th this particular uh, man, uh, Humali Kema, uh, tried, he went in for elect presidential elections on six occasions. The sixth time he was able to get elected as from opposition and defeated the incumbent, uh, Juan uh, Lunonga, uh, as mm. president. Uh, and uh, and uh, it's not usual in Africa that the oppositions get to defeat the incumbent. Uh, I think maybe Nigeria opened the gateway. And we'll <laughs> we'll Jonathan did, didn't he? Yeah, Jonathan did, PDP did, uh, APC2 uh, defeated an incumbent. And, and you, 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 it, it's a very, uh, it's a landmark achievement. And we hope uh, things will continue this way. Instead of having uh, our president or prime minister uh, uh, sitting tight, he wants to be live, uh, we'll have people in, we'll have the, the man in Cameroon who has been there for only God knows. A lifetime. Uh, how many how many years and, and a few others too i think even morocco and uh, but did uh, you know the former president of zambia the one kk kenneth yeah. kaunda that no, is, no 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 not kk not kk i mean i mean the one who was defeated lununga yeah yeah i thought you had some personal understanding of him well, he 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 was he was typical of African uh, president or prime ministers. He mm. he 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 meted out you know uh, cruelty to his people, especially to the opposition man who is now the the the, the president. Uh, he was not mm. kind to him. So he was arrested a number of times. He was brutalized, uh, but. As God will have it, uh, the table stunned, and uh, this 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 
man at 50, 59 or there, but it is now the, the, the president. And you okay. notice that the former president, Lungu, uh, accumulated so much debt. Uh, so Zambia is now in debt. And in fact, they are not able to China, meet, is it? Yes, they are, able, they are not able to meet their debt payment uh, uh, mm -hmm. timeline, especially with China and uh, a lot of corruption in the system. And so the, the present president has his job cut out for him. Oh, let me ask our man in Milan, Mark, do we, is this the beginning of new thing in Africa when the opposition can come in? And do we, are we going to see him perform? Is he going to bring something new to the table? Well, um, as an oppositionist, he, he's obviously going to do well compared to his, uh, uh, the, the, president, the, the former uh, pr president because he, he has been criticizing so he has seen so many uh, open loopholes that should be filled. So let, let's hope that um, uh, a new beginning for Zambians. Zambia is a small nation of just 70 million people. And um, there, there are, there are, when, with that number, there, there should be prospect for development because it's not as huge as Nigeria or as, uh, it's not even as huge as Ghana. So it's just 17 million people. Um, yeah. And this open doors less for, than legal states. Yeah. Less than legal states. So the, there should be uh, more more coordinations for progress. Uh, okay. We, we, we are the twilight of the program now, and I just want to ask you before I go to London, um, the state governors of the 17 southern states they are log ahead with the federal government over open grazing and ranching most of the southern governors and their state house of assembly have passed their bills into law that there will be no open grazing federal government is saying there will be what is your take uh, mark there should be no open grazing it, it, it yeah is, but there's, a, there's going to be a clash isn't it Obviously. Because it goes across all parties. It's it not across, so yes, 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 though. Mm. Yes. It's going to be a serious clash. But um, any knowledgeable person should know that there should this this should end. That, that, like uh, our guest, the engineer Samuel, um, it's a primitive form of uh, animal husbandry. It's too primitive. We, people have gone past that stage. So let, yeah, let, but let's, how about the politics of it? Wanting to conquer you, you look, we tell you what to do, and rearing cow across your land is the only way to show that we are in power and we we are on top of your land, and there's nothing you can do. It has political implication. It has a power implication, isn't it? Very correct. It, it does. That, that, that's what they are trying to do. It's just that, that show of supremacy. Mm. It is really about the 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 um, uh, technological side of it. They want to really show that they have power, and indeed mm. they have power. As long as we are still following the Nigerian 1999 Constitution, but they, even the Constitution is very clear and the law is very clear. There should be the grazing and ranching. They belong to the state governments. It's not even a federal government thing. But let me see how not. How do you see it? Uh, you have only one minute to say, discuss it. Uh, they are trying to show power, isn't it? You is your livelihood. We are going to trample on your livelihood, that is your farms, uh, with our cows, uh, and there's nothing you can do about it. Is this the kind of supremacy that we've been told earlier on today? Yeah, yeah. The 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 for the past six, going to seven years now, we have an administration where. Uh, they don't. They don't listen to their citizens. Uh, Buhari, the president, and his advisors, they always choose to do what they want, not what the people want. So I, I and we and so this is the legacy we are going to uh, to be bequeathed with at the end of 2023. And uh, quickly, we, we were told that the father of the speaker of Zamfana was abducted by the bandits 
and that the father of the leader of the bandits had been abducted or had been taken and arrested by the government and there are 500 bandits blocking the road of zamfara how far is that correct okay the 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 the, the leader of the bandits in zamfara when his yes. father was arrested he he the police or whoever arrested him told them that they have no business going near the father they should come and see if they can uh, arrest him it is him who is the terrorist or the bandit and not the father and in the zamfara forest the governor has confirmed to the world that there are more than thirty thousand uh, bandits kidnappers and and all the bad boys are in that forest <laughs> and the government knows that they are there the government knows where they are. He knows the, Both government. the federal government and the state yes. government. Yes. Um, <laughs> hey, Mark, Mark, I can see you are laughing. And <laughs> just before they you know, again, how they run the country. Just again, uh, on Sunday, the the bandits attacked the College of Agriculture in Bakura, Zamfara State. <laughs> took away student staff and their families uh, this is that there's a terminology they used to use banana republic you know yeah this was that <laughs> somebody said uh, if you don't call nigeria banana republic then he will call the Buari administration the banana administration so, <laughs> and you know mon monkeys eat banana so uh and this is uh, what we call government in nigeria <laughs> the first thing a government should do is to provide security but here we are explaining that uh, non-governmental actors they occupy our territory and there's nothing we can do about it well it's for nigerians to think about uh, what they can do about their own country next week we'll be bringing you the meltdown of the opposition party pdp as we speak there are three pdp chairmen, but we don't have time for it today we'll be bringing you the latest on the meltdown uh mark in milan what is your last take before we close no thank you very much dr shago you uh, anchored a beautiful news updates uh program um, we, we hope it echoes around Europe as usual and America, and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a wonderful platform. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, Ambassador Nantz, what's your final take? Thank you, Mark. Well, the uh, Tokyo 2020 Paralympics kicked off yesterday, and it's ongoing, maybe for the next two weeks or so. So we'll be giving you updates. Thank you very much, our viewers and listeners. That's how far we'll go today. I have to thank my colleagues, Nati Yako in the city of London, Mark in the city of Milan, and we have to thank our guest minister, guest speaker of today, uh, Engineer Samuel, and of course, all the, our crew members in Italy. Uh, this is how far we'll go until next week. My name is Shegun Johnson, and the program is News Echo.